Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances that have plus size representation. I love seeing this diversity in romance books and so I will hype about these books to the end of time because we definitely need romances that have characters with all different body types in them. Okay? Okay. Um, this is my third video with this trope representation, if you will. Um, so be sure to go check out those other videos if you have not seen them yet. I'll link them down below if you want even more recommendations with amazing plus size representation in them. So let's get into these 10 books. I'm very excited to talk about them. First, I have Rain Me In by Kayla Gross. This cowboy romance swept me off my feet, okay? <laughs> this is the romance between Blake and Gavin. It's also brother's best friend. However, that brother has died. He died five years ago. Blake's brother died five years ago and she has not been back to their small town or their family ranch since then but her mother was recently injured it broke her foot i think and she has come back to help take care of the ranch and to help her mom out one night one of the first nights she's back she goes to the local country dancing bar where gavin ends up working and gavin ends up seeing blake after all these years and he is utterly smitten um he had a crush on his best friend's older sister ever since he was a kid so he's kind of trying to make this woman his He's gonna shoot a shot. However, things don't really go the way he wants them to and she is pissed at him by the end of the night. So the next day, he basically comes crawling on his hands and knees to apologize for something he did. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna leave you with, okay? Um, I love the discussion being plus size in this book because guess what? It's not a big discussion. <laughs> like, Gavin is obsessed, obsessed with Blake and Blake is obsessed with herself like she's obsessed with the way she looks loves the way that she looks and she is obsessed with the fact that gavin is obsessed with her it's very refreshing reading about a book where both of the characters just like love love her body like yes i love it this was a great small town romance if you want a good hot cowboy romance like look no further this book does deal with a lot of grief the hero recently lost his dad and then the heroine's still dealing with the grief of her brother so just please be aware of that i i loved loved this one next is one that could be triggering for people so i'm going to let you know about it um but this is northern stars by Brittany c cherry this is her last book in her compass series which you technically can read as a standalone if you want but previous characters do pop up like in this book specifically um so just be aware of that but you can totally read it as a standalone aiden and Haley grew up next door to each other like their families um and they grew up as best friends um, and in Brittany Cherry fashion, the two of them fall in love when they're in high school and then it jumps later when they're adults and they fall in love again, like something broke them up when they were teenagers and they get back together when they're adults. So that's basically what this one is about. Um, Aiden ends up becoming this very, very popular like movie star almost overnight or over one summer. And um, both of their lives are completely changed after that. Both of them have kind of been thrust into the media. They're best friends, um, but towards the end of high school, Aiden reveals his feelings to Haley that he is like in love with her and she's having a really hard time because since they spend so much time together the press takes pictures of them posts them online and she sees all of the horrible comments made about her and about her body um she is a plus size woman and she has to read all the comments these horrible people are making about her online there is even a point in here that causes her to have disordered eating so it's just like please 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 Take care of yourself. If you're gonna be triggered by reading this book, don't read it, okay? But the cyberbullying in here is no joke, okay? And then when they break up for a certain reason and then they get back together when they're older, like he comes back to the small town after years and she works at the inn that he's gonna be staying in and he's like still a famous actor and all that stuff. Um, and she has learned to like love herself in that whole process of um, like their breakup and everything. And since she was a teenager, like, she has learned through experience to love herself. She's gone to therapy. She's dealt with hating her body and learning how to love it all over again. Um, and I really enjoyed that part of the book, but the cyberbullying part at the beginning when she's in high school is no joke. Like I had to put the book down a few times. So please just be aware of that before you go into this. Next, I have a novella that you could listen to on Audible Plus. If you have an Audible membership, this is A Walk in the Park by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This was so stinking cute. This is about Janelle and Andre and they meet like their dream dog at this dog shelter. But there's a little mix up at the dog shelter and apparently um, someone screwed up and <laughs> basically told 
Andre and Janelle that they could have the dog, but they don't know each other. And they walk into the like the adoption place and is fully expected to take this dog home with them. But it's complicated because they both want this dog. So they decided to co-parent little Zeus, a cute little Zeus. And the more time they spend together through their dog co-parenting, they fall in love. They were so cute with how prepared they were to be like dog parents. Like they were full in on it and I loved it. It was so cute. But that doesn't mean it was also hot at moments, okay? Okay. Um, and again, characters who love themselves, loves the way they feel, loves the way they look. So I love that aspect of this book. Muscles and Monsters by Ashley Bennett is another cute but hot read. Like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Like I was squealing, but I was also fanning myself. Like, it's so good. Okay, Tegan and Atlas meeting outside of um, both of their working establishments because uh, Tegan accidentally dropped one of the wedding cake tears she made splat on the sidewalk in front of him. Atlas is a monster creature. He's like a wolf monster creature. Wolves and humans kind of like live together. And he owns the gym down the street. She owns the bakery and he helps her clean up the cake and he just can't stop like smiling around her. And his tail has like a mind of its own and it's wagging like crazy when it's around her. And he cannot get enough of Tegan. He wants to ask her out and Tegan even makes up an excuse to go into his gym. She gets a gym membership just so she can look at him and be around him. It's so cute. Um, but Tegan is a plus size woman um, and I love the baking aspect in here as a baker myself. She's just so cute. I love her so much and I love how she was like wanting to get this gym membership. Well, number one, she wanted an excuse to see Atlas, okay? Um, but the other reason why she wanted to go is because she wants to be stronger. Like she dropped that cake in front of Atlas, like on the sidewalk. She's like, I just want to be stronger. So that's like one of her main goals in going to the gym. And I love that. Next is Sweet Vengeance by Viano Onimo. This is a monster romance. The heroine in here is our plus size character. And she was totally wronged in like the worst way possible by her ex. I think he essayed her and she wants revenge, like the ultimate revenge. So she ends up summoning a demon to help enact her revenge. Malachi is the one, is the demon, who answers Joy's call and he is absolutely obsessed with this stunning woman. Like is obsessed with her vengeance. Like he gets off on like feeling like the rage that she has. Like, yes. And he just becomes a total cinnamon roll for her. Like we'll do anything for her, would kill for her, would die for her. Like <laughs> he's obsessed with her. He becomes a total puddle for her. And she's so confident. Oh my gosh. There's like the dress on the cover that she's wearing. There's this whole scene when she like walks out in it for the first time and his jaw is just like on the floor. He like is obsessed with that outfit. Like it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. I do have a few Jillian Graves books. Jillian Graves is awesome at including a bunch of different body sizes in her books, the few that I've read. Um, so first is Blood Moon. This is like the Faded Romance Special Edition. Um, this is the other edition if you recognize books based off the cover like I do. <laughs> um, so Blood Moon in here is a vampire witch romance. And it's like reverse grumpy sunshine where the heroine is the grump and the hero is a sunshine. Um, and the hero is the vampire. Okay, anyway, so Hazel in here owns a bar and she doesn't have the best like night at work and she goes to a monster paranormal party afterward and she ends up having the most amazing night like hookup night with Vlad a vampire but then she gets a little bit pissed when she realizes that he owns her competing business like he's the manager for her competing business across the street this club across the street from her bar and he's like I don't care like I'm into you like I'm all in with you I don't care about how our business is our rivals and she's like no 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 it's like it's like a, a thing of morals like I cannot be with you Okay, but he is like all in. He's all in with her. He's gonna do everything to make this woman his. He is obsessed with her, just like Malachi was in the last book um, <laughs> that I talked about. He is all in with her though. He's gonna do anything to make her his. He's like, this witch is gonna see that I am made for her. He is absolutely enthralled by this woman and I loved seeing it. Another one by Jillian Graves is a novella. It's a part of an anthology, but I think she's going to be like publishing it as a standalone. It's in the Monsters in Love anthology, um, which is like a anthology filled with novellas by monster romance authors. Um, but the one that I'm specifically talking about is this story called uh, The Stone and the Star, which is a gargoyle romance and the cover for the like the novella itself. I love it so much. I love it so much. It's so pretty. Um, so this one's about 
Astra, who uh, starts out this book having some fun with herself on the edge of a window, like in her apartment building. And she just so happens to be like across the street from a building that has gargoyles like standing there. She doesn't know that one of the gargoyles is alive and is watching her and is literally like gripping the side of the building so hard so he doesn't like jump and fly and basically make her his. So once he has a glimpse of her, he's not gonna let her go. <laughs> this was such a joy to read, so fun. This woman is stunning, beautiful. So um, I love just reading about her. Long in love with this giant gargoyle man. Another novella is a Ruby Dixon one. This is When She's Fearless. Also, can we talk about how we're getting so many like plus size heroines on the covers of books? Because I have read a few romance books quite a few romance books where they don't put the plus size heroine on the cover, even though they are plus size. Like, look at us getting with it. Look how pretty she is. I love it. This is one of her books in the Bristover series. Um, it can be read as a standalone. All you need to know is that this book takes place on um, the planet called Brisda 3, which is a human refugee planet. Oh, something's falling out of here. It's a bookmark. Like I was saying, this book, this series takes place on a planet called Rista 3, which is a human refugee planet where humans find solace and are able to live fulfilling lives after being illegally taken from Earth or being forced into alien slavery. So this one is about Chelsea who lives on the colony of Rista 3 and she has decided after being in slavery to, and now she's free, to live a like a fearless, exciting life. One day she ends up finding an alien man on her property. I think he lost something in like the river that runs through her property and many others. And so he's like walking along it trying to find the thing he lost. I think it's his like, key card to get into work or something but she doesn't run him off when she finds him on her property she invites him into her home instead because she's very attracted to him his name is Harusek and he was so cute he was so cute he was like in awe of this woman he's like uh this woman wants me like she this stunning goddess of a woman wants me okay like <laughs> This was a cute read. I love Ruby Dixon's novellas. Like what else do you expect for me to say? <laughs> Another alien romance is His Human Nanny by Michelle Mills. I've mentioned this one, I think before, but I just have to mention it again because um, more people need to read it. If you love alien romances, this one is so fun. The heroine of this book ends up accepting a job to be a nanny on this like alien planet to a very, very rich alien guy. He just found out that he's a dad. Um, his ex, uh, he didn't know she was pregnant. And then she just ends up leaving the twin babies that she had on his doorstep. They're also like demon alien creatures where they basically look like what you would picture like red Satan to look like. And so when she, the heroine of this book, gets picked up at the train station on this planet by a creature that essentially looks like the devil, she is shocked and faints. <laughs> and when she wakes up, she is so embarrassed. She's like, I am so sorry. Like, I'm not scared of you. I was just scared of like the devil you're not the devil like she was like i'm that's so embarrassing i'm so sorry if you want to fire me i totally understand i feel so bad but he's like no it's fine i totally understand he ends up bringing her back home with him to help take care of his twin babies and um they get in a lot of hijinks those little twins do even though they're like infants they still get into hijinks together and as the hero and the heroine um have a very hard time keeping their hands off of each other because they find the other person to be very attractive very attractive Okay, um, but this is a fun nanny romance. If you want an alien nanny romance, like please pick this one up. I'm obsessed with this heroine, by the way, and I think every book in this series has a plus size heroine. So if you want like a whole series with this representation and you love alien romances, look no further. And the last one that I have to mention is a historical. This is The Devil's Submission by Nicola Davidson. This is the marriage and trouble romance between um, Eliza and Grayson. Nicola Davidson knows how to write a book, okay? Knows how to write a book in that department, okay? Um, so they were married a few years ago, but they actually haven't seen each other in a while. They're very much estranged. Eliza ends up making her way back to London for a certain reason. And one of those reasons is to win her husband back. She has no idea why her husband basically cut her off or turned the cold shoulder to her when they got married um but she is trying to figure out why and um you figure out why Grayson acted the way that he did when you read the book because I can't spoil it because it's kind of like a novella but um this book has more of a dominant heroine so you can look forward to that because I feel like that's not really a trope in a lot of books that's all I want to say about that one because I don't want to spoil it but um yeah the heroine in here is plus size and I think we, we need more um like historical romances with plus size representation because I don't feel like there's a lot. I can think of like two on the top of my head. I need more. 
Um, so leave your recs down below if you have them. Anyways, there you have it. Those are romances with plus size representation in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, what emoji are we gonna do? We're gonna do a star, a star emoji down below. Um, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.